This video is made possible by the following sponsors. Make sure to check out their products as well as the rest of my gear in the description below. Hey guys, my t-shirt is slightly too tight boy here and welcome back to Assetto Corsa for another video. If you can read, you have worked out by now that we are doing another Norge Cypher hot lap video, this time in probably one of the most difficult cars to drive in the Seto Corsa. This is a roof, and it is definitely pronounced roof, I asked a German, a roof CTR, otherwise known as the Yellow Bird. Now, roof is a tuning manufacturer of Porsche, and this is their version of the 1987 911 Carrera. Like a lot of my Nordschleifer Hot Lab videos, this one comes from real life inspiration. Now, in the description below will be a link to the video that made me think, right, I need to do that. It's an awesome lap on board from a roof CTR Yellowbird, and you just see the amount of work required to get this car around a circuit quickly. This car feels like it has too much power for its own good. It puts out around 460 brake horsepower, and whilst that is a lot, it isn't up in the crazy numbers we've seen in this hot lap challenge so far. But that power, coupled with the fact this car weighs only 1,200 kilograms, means that the real life version, and this one too, is good for 211 miles per hour. That means when this car first went into production, it was the fastest production car in the world. And to keep the spirit of this thing being an absolutely bonkers road car, I'm gonna be attempting this lap on the street compound of tire and not the semi-slick. So if nothing else, this lap is gonna be spectacular to watch. For the first time ever on this series, I'm really not sure what to expect in terms of lap time, so well, guess there's only one way to find out. Well then, that was a rather ridiculous outlap. This thing is an absolute monster, um, but for all the wrong reasons. Slowing this thing down is so tricky. The, the brakes on this car, they aren't bad brakes, but they're just not really made to slow a car down from over 200 miles per hour. I have no idea how this thing is gonna do, but I know it's gonna be a fun ride regardless. So let's go. Turbo spooling. Let's attack the green hell in the roof CTR Yellowbird. I am going to be tired after this one. So then, nice and easy for the last part of the course. I'm being trying to be as soft as I can on, that, on the throttle. What you're seeing already, what happens with this thing? It likes to go sideways a lot up to third gear and then already on the brakes over before we even get anywhere near the crest down the second try and get it in to the inside here these street tires really not helping nice there now up to third take fourth temporarily before going back down to third for hats and back get nice and tight to the curb look for the outside there this car has very little lateral grip on these tires so you have to slow it down nice and early Use the lower gears, don't be afraid of them. Second gear through here, so even though I almost go wide, then trying to get on the throttle nice and early. The car gets sideways, and we're going to see that a lot over the course of its lap. We can touch curbs in this car, it's a road car. Third gear out of there, should be in second, really. You see the car really struggle. This is a car that needs to be in at high RPM to get that turbo working. We have 1.4 bar of boost going through this thing. So if you're outside of the rev range, you really know it, coming up to the flu plats, blend off on the brake before we go over the jump, fourth gear through here, try and turn it in, easy, easy on the power, so easy to slide the car through here, pretty much zero downforce in this car, so going faster doesn't make things easier, actually makes things a lot worse, up to fifth gear now, we're beginning up to nearly 300 kilometres an hour in a car from 1987, coming up to the kink, fourth gear on the brakes, nice and hard, try and get the car to, stuck to the inside, but it just wanders all the time, on the brakes again, nice and early. You have to really just get every preconception of a fast car out of your mind when you drive this thing. The brakes have to be on early, they have to be on hard for a long time, otherwise you will not stop for the corner, but then the reward of next it with this. Absolute awesome power from this thing. Again, 300, 400, sorry, and 60 horsepower doesn't sound like much, but it feels like, it feels like double that in this car, it really does. Easy for this section, we'll take second. It's got to be so careful on the on the right foot here. I'm trying to kind of blip the throttle center-ish style to get some turbo going for out of the corner there. But again, that can also work against you. Up to fourth once more. Trying to be soft through here. Now usually I'm used to coming through here with a lot of downforce. You can just throw it in. Not so much in this car. There you go. It all looks fairly pedestrian 
from your point of view, I assume, but I can tell you it's far from it. The car is always threatening to do something incredibly scary. Their second gear, I thought I'd put it in fourth for a second there. Get to the inside on the power as soon as possible. That's where this thing makes up its time, it's just any straight road, so you have to use it. Now miss, hit, miss. Going through this section is very tricky because you have to try and get very quickly, then slow it down really very early for the hairpin. So I'm talking getting on the brakes here. Second gear, try and roll it in. So even then the car is refusing to turn in. The classic Porsche understeer there. And then it's met with power oversteer. What a combo. Uh, we'll break about here. Oh, that's a bit big down shift. Fourth to second. Not quite correct there. On the kerb on exit, smash the throttle, get it nice and tidy. This car is just a different kind of challenge to the fast cars around here. It's one of survival and just trying to keep grip. Trying to make the thing do what you want it to do instead of letting it very lazily fall off the course, which is what happens most of the time. <laughs> That's spooky through there. Take third. Can we use third up here? I'm going to try third. Uh, perhaps a bit low, maybe we should have taken second gear there, but it gave us a soft exit at least. Shifting at just below 7,000 RPM, that's where the peak power is. Nice. Got to be careful through this section, you can't go flat up here, the car will wander to the outside and you will slip off the course. Now we can go flat. It's up into top gear now. About 250 k's up here, the car will keep climbing. If you let it. But you're seeing just how on edge it is on these tyres. Trying to run four, four through, they've gotten the power a bit too early, started understeering, had to come off again. But it's better than going off the circuit in this thing, trust me now, I say that. Oh, on the curb, sideways! Ha <laughs> ha, saved it! That was terrifying, but that is an insight to what happens when this car goes wrong. It's just, you start juggling the wheel and you look rather silly. So you try not to do that as much as you can. Now the carousel, over the bump, getting loose. Hard on the throttle. When we come out of here, we have to time it right though. There you go. Wheel spin, trying to sort the power, not quite managing it. Now uphill, this can just about be done in fourth gear if you get the line perfect. That was okay, went to the outside. Now we have to go down the third and be so, so careful with the loud pedal through this section. You're seeing already, this is the weight transfer at the back, penduluming in the back. Very Porsche, or very roof I should say, I suppose. Easy through this section. The VR headset is fucked up so much that everything is super out of focus right now. Luckily, the big red curves at the side of the circuit are showing me where to go. Throw it to the inside here. <laughs> it just feels like it wants to kill you at every corner. That's what I love about cars like this. It is truly a driving challenge. You have all this power to, to deal with. Bad tyres, not great brakes either. And the fact you're having to drive this very manually, heel and toe of course in this thing. Second gear for YouTube corner. On the power early, sideways, yes, love it. Okay, aim for the kerbs. It all feels so pedestrian, I have no idea what kind of time this thing is going to do, I guess I'm aiming to get somewhere under eight minutes, whether that's going to be possible or not, I have no idea, we'll know when we get to the line though. Over the jump, lift the brake as we land and back on. Just make sure we don't lock it. If you lock it there, you go into the gravel trap. I can tell you that from experience. Balancing on the throttle again. Feels like you're right on the knife edge in this car all of the time. Back downhill, plummeting downhill and VR is so cool through there, especially in a car like this. We were just wrestling the entire way around. Power, there you go. Find your braking zone for this long right-hander. It's so easy to loop it in here. Again, the car has zero lateral grip. You have to have it pointing in the straight line all the time. Well, this happens. Oh, right onto the kerb on the outside there. Just about managed to hold it together. Luckily, there's a bit of runoff there. Second carousel. Okay, now we get to nail the throttle for one last tricky sequence of corners. I say that. The, the sequence after the straight is terrifying in this car because the brakes are not great. But easy through here. Look for our, look for our spot, look for our spot. There, there it is. Not quite, I got in the power a bit too early there, the car got sideways, had to get out of it again, but now we can let the uh, the roof yellow bird absolutely run away down the straight. And we get when we get near to the red line there on the on the uh, the tachometer on the rev counter, we're doing pretty much 200 miles per hour. 
We're not going to quite reach it up here. We have to dab the brakes coming around here. We will go off the circuit, but we're very close to it now. In a car from 987, dab of the brakes. Car in, back on the power. Hits the bottom of the hill, and now we brake. We brake hard. Just try and, try and get it through here in one piece. The car barely slows down. Last part of the course now, last corner. And that is the CTA Yellowbird and the Nordschleife. And the time is a 7.46.94, under eight minutes. I didn't think that was gonna be possible. What a ride that was. You are constantly battling with this car in every sense of the word. Understeer, power oversteer, zero grip laterally, which just makes this thing an absolute joy to drive and a joy to watch, I hope, for you guys. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button. Of course, if you really enjoyed it, hit subscribe to be notified of future videos and as well as a bell notification icon because that way you'll be notified of future streams and future videos, which is uh, a double, double whammy, really. Again, in the link below, I've put the clip of this thing going around here in real life. Check it out. It is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and if I don't see you before Christmas, hopefully I will. But if you don't, take care. Have an awesome Christmas. I'll see you next time.